Planet Shakers is a global ministry that has grown from a small youth conference in Australia to now impacting every continent of the world. Through its church, awakenings, music tours and other ministries, Planet Shakers has a mandate to empower generations to win generations. When I'm filled with you, I hear as you hear, I speak as you speak, I live as you live. I was just wondering what this feeling was. You know, it was God um, knocking on my heart to, to open the door. Jesus is always reaching out to us in love, even when we do not recognize his extended hand. In John 4, 1, we read the story of Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman. Throughout the exchange, his goal was to help the woman recognize her greatest need, salvation and the forgiveness of her sins. She had spent her life trying to find love and acceptance but found herself lonely and longing. He offered her the living water of the Holy Spirit, the only thing that would quench her spiritual and emotional thirst. This world is filled with wells that promise to provide love, acceptance, and self-worth, but they never fully satisfy. Only Jesus can fully quench our spiritual thirst. I'm Russell Evans and I want to shake the planet. Moses has an encounter with God and he's there and he, he says in Exodus 33, verse 16 to 7, how will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the people on the face of the earth? See, the presence of God in our lives distinguishes us as God's people. Do you know the difference between walking with God and walking without God? Are you aware of your water levels in your life? See, Jesus is the living water. He is what we thirst for. He is what we hunger for. The psalmist was saying, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you because when I'm filled with you, I have clear vision. When I'm filled with you, my walk is awesome. When I'm filled with you, I hear as you hear. I speak as you speak. I live as you live. As a deer pants for the water, not pants for a church service, pants for Him. Start in John chapter four, the Samaritan woman comes to Jesus and she asks for water and Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that you asked for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. One of my favorite scriptures in 
John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38, it says, On the last day in the great day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Jesus declared this one October morning on the final day of the Feast of Tabernacles. See, the streets were packed with people for the annual reenactment of the rock giving water miracle of Moses. In the honor of their ancestors, the people slept in tents. Every day, the priests would draw water from the Gion Spring and carried down a path lined with people to the temple and poured the water over the altar. On the seventh day, the priests would circle the altar seven times, pouring seven jars on this symbol of this symbolic water. It may have been at this very moment that Jesus stood and shouted, if anyone who is thirsty, come. After me. And out of his or her innermost being will flow rivers of living water to heal the soul. Is when they're thirsty, don't do what dogs do. You know how dogs say, come and lap. You know, they'll get there and they'll lap. Deers don't do that. What deers do when they're thirsty? <laughs> Sorry, cameraman. <laughs> Kangaroo deer. What do they do? They see the water. They don't bend down and, and lap. They jump in it. And they get consumed with it. So it gets into their pores. So it gets into every part of their being and they begin to drink of the water. Would there be a group of people here at High Sense Arena? Would there be a group of people online, on the internet, all around the world? Would there be a group of people that just won't come and have a little taste of God's presence? Won't just come and lap up, oh, that's a nice worship song. Oh, that's a nice. Would there be a whole heap of people that would launch into the deep, deep calling deep and all of a sudden say, I want to be so consumed with God. I want Him to be in me. I want to be Him to be around me. I want Him to be over me. I want Him to be everything about me. <laughs> Too many Christians have their nice little lap worship. Nice little lap word. Nice little lap experience, but God doesn't want to give you just a little drink. 
That's why the Bible talks about the throne of God and the river of God that flows from His throne. And He says some would come in ankle deep, some would come in knee deep, some would come in thigh deep, but God's looking for people who get so consumed with Him, so filled with Him, so their vision is different, so their talk is different. Now they can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Now they can declare the things as if they are, aren't as if they are. They begin to hear about a city that needs its waters healed. They begin to see the impossible. Would there be a group of people here at Planet Shakers Awakening 2040 that says, God, consume me? If that's true, give him a praise like he's worthy. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Let there be a shout of victory.
See, the church is doing all its best to be relevant. And I believe being relevant. We live in a world that we should speak the language. Jesus spoke the language of the day. He didn't speak in another language so no one would understand them. There was no subtitles in his speech. So I believe in being contemporary. But when my mother was dying of cancer in a hospital, my swag did nothing to her. See, God hasn't called the church just to entertain people. He does not say, I'll build my entertainment center and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He says, I will build my church and the church of Jesus Christ is alive and powerful. It reflects what heaven is and heaven is full of peace and joy. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. There's worship 24 seven. There is an amazing atmosphere of honor and faith. You see heaven wants to invade earth, but it's needing somebody to say, as Pastor Jensen Franklin said in our 4.30 service last night, he's looking for vessels to fill. But if we have lids, we can't receive. See, Rudy, could you come here? This is how sometimes we come to God. Could you hold this, Rudy? That's cool. That's fantastic. Um, could you hold, hold my book? It's a good book. That will help you. Um, and he says, Lord, I want to receive from you. And the Lord comes and says, okay, here, I want to give to you. But he can't receive because he hasn't let go. See, to receive, he has to put down his agenda, put down his disappointment, put down his hurt, put down put down and then he comes this is all right now I'm ready I'm ready to receive and God begins to pour out his presence on a what would somebody lift holy hands My wife and I um, grew up in New Zealand. Both our families were full of alcohol, uh, drug addiction, emotional and physical abuse. Growing up, I, I didn't have my father around. Uh, most of my life, he was inc incarcerated. Me and a group of friends, we uh, started forming a gang and we didn't know what to do with our lives. We just no, no uh, ambition to look for a job. We just thought living on the streets, drinking, um, taking drugs was a, a way of life. Um, growing up in my family, there was a lot of um, domestic violence. And I used to see that when I was young. I also saw a lot of drugs happening and alcohol involved and infidelity. For me, I was involved with drugs because it took me away um, from the past that I'd come from. When I first met Penny, um, we both sort of had similar backgrounds. And when we met each other, I guess that's what we had in common. We didn't know that we were bringing this into the relationship. Uh, early in, on in the relationship, uh, there was a lot of anger. Uh, no trust, uh, physical and emotional abuse on my behalf. And throughout that time, uh, sh she forgave me for all I'd done. And she knew, she knew deep down inside that uh, I was gonna change eventually. So about four years ago, my husband and I moved here to Australia. Um, we wanted a fresh start in our lives. We um, 
we were bored of how we were living our lives with drugs and alcohol and, and all the abuse that was happening, we decided to come here for a fresh start. And when we moved here, we found that we were still doing the same things. So about a year after we moved to Australia, um, Penny's sister invited me to come along to Planet Shakers. Just seeing other people just letting go in the spirit, I felt, wow, if, if, they, if this is how they get their sense of peace, I'm pretty sure I can get something like that as well. Altar call came, I gave my life to the Lord, and from then on I made a decision that I wanted to keep coming to Planet Shakers. And then a week later, Penny came. But I was uh, making up every excuse in the book to, to not go, like work's busy. Something was just telling me that I needed to go. When I got to church, yeah, I was just amazed and shocked at people just praising and worshipping. I was just wondering what this feeling was. And little did I know, it was just the Holy Spirit, just, you know, it was God um, knocking on my heart to, to open the door. Hold the call, came us. I just, I just felt like I needed to be up there. My sister, she actually walked me up there and I knew that God was my um, Heavenly Father then. Yeah, just after that moment, I just felt loved. I just felt like secure where I hadn't before. Seeing Penny walk down to the altar, it made me so happy. That everything that I believed in from when I was a non-Christian, this was, this was the vision that I saw. My life's totally changed now from where I've come from, from how I was brought up. Um, I'm serving in church now, and my life is just totally um, amazing. I love it. I love doing life with Penny. I love serving in church, and I love serving God. Yeah, I, re I really, really do look forward to what God has in store for us. I know that there are more steps for us to take, and I can't wait for what he's going to unravel for us in the future. glad you could join us today. Our prayer is that you would encounter Jesus and go deeper and deeper with Him every day. In this episode, I spoke about how God just doesn't want to give us a taste of His presence. He wants us to be consumed with His presence. He is looking for vessels to fill, but we can only be filled by Him if we put down our agendas our disappointments and our hurts. So let me ask you today, where's your spiritual water levels at? Are you thirsty for Him? Are you hungry for Him?
Today, Penny and Tanya shared with us their story, how they came to know God personally, and in doing so, their marriage was completely transformed. That's how powerful the love of God is. It can turn the hardest heart and take an impossible situation and turn it around for good. The greatest blessing of all is to know Jesus Christ personally. If you've never invited Him into your life, why don't you do so right now? He will change your life forever.